Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about three cranial nerves. But before we get started, make sure you go to ninjanerd.org, check out all of our notes and illustrations. And if you do like this video, comment down below, subscribe, and leave a thumbs up. But as we go through our cranial nerve videos today, we're going to be talking about three that work with the eyes in tandem. So if you think about assessments when we're assessing our patients and we're working on assessing them, we're going to be able to do all three of these with one assessment. So that's why they're grouped together. So let's start talking about them today. We have our ocular motor, we have trochlear, and then we have abducens. And when we go through the different types, we've been talking about are they sensory, are they motor, or are they both? And for this in particular, all three of them are motor. And then the function for all of these is going to be eye movement. So as we look at ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens, we're going to start all the way on the right here with abducens. And the reason we're going to start with abducens is because it's easy to look at and see the muscles here that abducens is controlling. So we look at this diagram, we see there's a bunch of different muscles that are around the eye, and I drew both because I think it's going to give you a better understanding and a better dynamic of what muscle does what with the eyes. So for abducens, the eye movement is going to be working on this muscle right here, which is our lateral rectus. So as we can see here for our right eye and our left eye, our lateral rectus are located on the lateral portions of our eyes. So it's allowing our left eye to look lateral on that side, on the left side, and then our right eye to look lateral on the right side. So it's only controlling one movement, along with the trochlear as well. So we go to cranial nerve four here. The trochlear is one of the easiest ones to understand as well because we have this little hook here where the muscle is coming through. So we can see this right here, this is the trochlea. And our muscle that the trochlear works with is our superior oblique, which is this right here and right here. So we can see here the muscle, as it's coming through this little opening and it's going to be contracting, it's going to pull the eye. So as it pulls the eye, it's actually going to allow it to look laterally and have it look down. On this side, same thing, lateral and down. Now you're going to notice that we've located and identified two muscles, abducens with the lateral rectus, trochlear with the superior oblique, but we have a bunch of other muscles we haven't talked about. That's because ocular motor is going to do the main portion of the movement and it's also going to do a couple other things that we're going to touch on. So first let's finish off these muscles right here. We've got a couple that we didn't identify. We have one here which is our superior rectus, we have our inferior rectus, we have our medial rectus, and then we have our inferior oblique. So these four are what the ocular motor muscle or ocular motor nerve is working with. So in general, now that we've identified we have our superior rectus, we have our medial rectus, inferior rectus, and then the inferior oblique here. And we can see that if the superior rectus is going to contract, we'll be able to look up. Medial rectus contract for the right eye. We're going to be looking to the middle here. Media, or inferior rectus contracting is going to be able to make the eye look down. And then for our inferior oblique, this is going to help us look medial and up. Okay, so as this contracts, the eye is going to turn up. So we can see that we've identified all of the muscles, right, that the eye has in order for all these movements to occur. But there's also a couple other things that the ocular motor nerve does do. It does have a parasympathetic innervation which helps with the lens, okay, and the ciliaris muscle and the pupil. And there's one other muscle as well that works with the ocular motor nerve, which is the levator palpebra superioris, which is a muscle up in here, and it's going to allow for the eyelid to lift up. And we were going to talk about how do we assess our patients. So for the main portion of assessing ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens, there's a couple different little assessments we do together. The first is we're just going to ask the patient to look at us. When they look at us, do their eyes look equal? Is there any drifting? Does one look like it's turning wonky in a weird way? And we're assessing the patient to make sure that everything is looking symmetrical even and, you know, the eyes are doing what we ask the patient to do. Look at me and they're able to focus and look at us. The next assessment then would be, I'm going to ask the patient, can you follow my finger without moving your head? Now when we do this, we have a diagram that's going to pop up here and show you that typically we can do the H pattern with our patient, right? Follow my finger without moving your head, right? You're going to move your finger in the H pattern. Or some people like to do the star, have the patient follow their finger with the star. Either way, I just want you to understand by looking at this diagram is that it's showing how all those different muscles are working together as the patient is looking. So for example, the right eye is going to be using the medial rectus to look to the left, while the left eye would be using the lateral rectus. 
And then the last assessment would be asking the patient to look at me and then look to the left, look back at me, look to the right, look back at me, look up, look back at me, look down, and again, assessing to see if they have that reactive movement, if they're able to move their eyes. We go through, we assess our patient, we're getting all of this assessment knowledge, and then if there is any type of failure or issues with this assessment, that is when we can go in and see, are there any things we need to investigate? Are there causes, risk factors that we are concerned for? And it's the same that we've been talking about with all these videos. Is there some sort of trauma to the area? Is there some sort of issue with the nerve? Is there some sort of compression on it, inflammation or infection around the area? Or is the patient having some other issue that's underlying? Maybe there's some demyelination of the sheath of the nerve that we'd have to further look into. But overall, all these risk factors are typically always the same. All right, Ninja Nerds, that is the video on ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.